Hello students. In anticipation of watching the movie Pursuit of Happiness, we're going to do a very brief overview of the Declaration of Independence. I'm going to suggest that while you're taking these notes and listening to the video, maybe have two separate windows open. So you could have the window open with your notes on it that you have to fill in. And then for the time being, pretend this is where the video is. What you're going to want to do is you're going to have the video in a separate window. I would shrink it down or make it about half the screen, if you will. And then take your other window and go ahead and make that half the window as well. Totally up to you how you want to do it. I like doing half and half. You could have the you know the video playing over here while you're filling in the notes over here. Entirely up to you. If you don't need the video very big, you could certainly then shrink this down even further. You could even make it a smaller box whatever works for you but it's going to be useful to have them both open you could also just play the video on your phone while you're taking the notes again whichever you prefer remember when I give you notes digitally and it's given a line such as this you're gonna highlight the line and then type the word that I give you okay if you have any questions about setting up your windows, pause the video right now and ask Mrs. Card. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. I will tell you that while I'm going through these notes, you're also going to have a copy of the Declaration of Independence at any point you can go back and refer. So there's section one, section two, three, four, and then the conclusion. So if you wanna know precisely what I'm talking about, you do have a copy of the Declaration of Independence if you'd like to refer to it. Read it, review it, and then go back to the notes to see what I say um, is basically the summary of each section. Let's get started. The Declaration of Independence. So that moment we declared that we no longer wanted to be attached to Britain. So we wrote a real fancy document that also kind of resembles a breakup letter with King George III. Section 1. The Introduction. Okay, the declaration starts out with the longest sentence ever. Seriously though, it was very long. But it's actually just a simple heads up about what's going to go down. Jefferson and company point out that generally speaking, when a country breaks up with another country, it's good manners to explain why. And they're totally going to do that right now. Section 2, the preamble. This is the really important section as it will lead us into our discussion tomorrow and then lead straight into our movie, Pursuit of Happiness. Here are some lofty ideas about humanity. Oh, and also King George III is the worst. This section in the Declaration of Independence is all about laying out the basics of what America wants from its government. First things first, everyone is born equal with a bunch of inherent rights. Government was created to protect those rights. You might be familiar with the whole life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness business, right? Those are the biggies here. They go on to explain that if the government's failing to do that one thing it's supposed to do, the people definitely have the right to trade it in for a newer, better model. This doesn't happen as often as it should because people, well, they don't like change. The declaration jumps 
right into it. King George III and his friends have gotten way too tyrannical. Basically, they have way too much power, and they're doing some pretty cruel things with that power. So they've gotten way too tyrannical with the colonies. The people under their rule should, no, must, throw away this government and put something more agreeable in its place. To end this section, the author set up a list for all the terrible things King George has done. Section 3. The Indictment of King George III. So, basically, in this section, this is where they lay out the serious charges that they have against King George III. The list of all the terrible things King George III has done. As promised, here is proof that King George III is the worst. See all the awful things he's inflicted on the colonies? Go back, look at that document. You can see them all listed. I'm not going to say them all verbatim here, but feel free to read that section. It's quite interesting. The the text provides a long list of those terrible things, including, but not limited to, dissolving legislators, stopping the colonies from passing laws they wanted, leaving troops around when the colonies aren't fighting anyone, blocking trade, taxing without consent. Jefferson could and does go on and on and on. There are literally dozens of things on this list, and they're definitely true. Jefferson says that explicitly. According to the text, right now King George is about to attack the colonies with mercenaries. What is this guy's deal? The declaration explains that colonial leaders have tried to be reasonable and find some alternative solution to this, and Mr. Depotism, or is it Sir Depotism, won't have it. So, in other words, King George has exercised absolute power, but in a really cruel and oppressive way. Section 4. The Denunciation of British People. When we have denunciation, it basically means that we're going to accuse you of something uh, that you did pretty horribly, but we're going to do it publicly which is what the Declaration of Independence does. A2, fellow brutes, I had to add a little bit of a literary reference. If you don't know that reference, it's from Julius Caesar. A2 basically means, hey, you were our friend, and guess what? You betrayed us. So they tried, guys. They tried to get hold of the people over in Britain. Not the MPs or the royals, but the regular Joes. The British people ignored them. The colonists aren't angry. They're disappointed. And no one can say that they didn't try to make this work. So before they wrote this declaration, they tried on multiple occasions to get things going and working, and no one listened. Section 5, the conclusion of the Declaration of Independence. Let's get independent. All of the folks in Congress agree that America is a free and independent nation, no longer a part of Britain. Bye-bye. Sayonara. Now they get to do all the cool things that real countries do, like make war and trade with other people. The people in the colonies are in this thing together as, newly, the United States of America. Here's the overall big concept sum it up as briefly as possible. For more information, you certainly should seek out your history and government teachers. They can give you all the details. But here's the big concept. The King of England is treating the colonies terribly. Since they are, you know, human beings, the colonists have inherent rights as people, which their government is supposed to protect. Instead, the British government seems to have given in to the dark side and become tyrannical, taking advantage of the colonists without acknowledging their rights or allowing them representation. So, they're saying, bye-bye, Britain, and are going to start their own country, complete with a better government that they create themselves. In the immortal words of the Von Trapp family singers, so long, farewell, auf Wiedersehen, goodbye. 
Now I just want you to do one more thing. Here are questions to ponder, five of them. You're going to pick one of these five to answer. You can delete the other four questions and then answer it directly below. So for instance, if you want to answer number one, you're just going to delete all the other questions and answer directly below. Okay, once you're done with that, you can go ahead and turn in this slideshow. If you have any questions, please reach out to Mrs. Karn. And thank you so much for listening. You've been a lovely audience.